And so I want to start with this in Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, for the sake of time, let's look at v verse 32. It says, what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. What needs to be subdued in your life? What are some things that, 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 you, that you need to put your foot on? Well, according to this, it was faith is what caused them to subdue kingdoms. We, we, may, talk, we may talk about David's ability to, to, uh, to win great battles, but we have to understand the core of it wasn't necessarily his strength that had to do with his faith in his God. So faith caused them to subdue kingdoms. Faith caused them to work righteousness, obtain promises. Are there some promises that you need to obtain? Yes. It's going to happen by and through faith. Stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Then it says this, out of weakness were made strong. Now this word weakness here is actually a word for sickness and disease. So out of weakness, out of in sickness and disease, they were made strong. The word strong there means to recover health and to recover strength. So it was gonna be by faith that they were gonna turn their, their weakness, their sickness was gonna turn into strength. And as I speak this morning, I declare that there's some people here, you're, you're battling some weakness in your life. You're battling maybe sickness. Maybe there's some other issues going on. Maybe there's oppression in your mind. There's attacks happening within your life. But I declare over you today that there's things that, that are turning from weak, weakness to strength. You're going to recover your strength today. There's some health that's going to be recovered today. But all these things were, came by through faith. It says they became valiant in battle. Hallelujah. Are, you, are anyone here in a battle? Anyone in here has been in a battle? Anyone in a battle right now? You know what? You might have a battle later this year. But the issue to overcome is going to be your faith and your confidence in God. And so it was through this faith that they became valiant in battle. And it said they turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Now, 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 that's not E.T., all right? This, was, this is talking about the aliens meant the enemy. The enemy, so through faith, it says they turned to flight the enemy, the, the armies of the enemy. I declare of you today that there are some enemies that are going to run from you today. There's some enemies, hallelujah, that you are going to overcome, that there's some things that you might be walking through, but I'm telling you, the enemy, hallelujah, that stood before you, you will not stand before you any longer according to Exodus chapter 14. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Peter. Thank you, Valinda. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1 Peter. 1 Peter I'm just going to read some word here. It's okay to read the word in church, right? Blessed be the God and Father, this is verse 3, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So I have a living hope today because of what Jesus did for me. Verse 4 says, to an inheritance, to an inheritance. So I've been... I've been um, I have this living hope through Jesus Christ because the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, but it's not just from the dead, but it's to an inheritance. Say inheritance. inheritance. Incorruptible, uh, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, meaning it's an inheritance that this world can't touch. It's an inheritance that the world doesn't give me. Hallelujah. It's an inheritance that I don't look to you for. It's an, it's an inheritance that you don't look to your job for. It's an inheritance that you don't look to your spouse for. It's, it's an inheritance that you don't look to the political system. 
It's incorruptible. Incorruptible meaning it is without defect. I have an inheritance that has no defect in it, Vic. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. An inheritance. Mm, thank you. Whew, as Vic would say, I feel my helper. <laughs> All right. I love you, Vic. I'm going to be going right there. All right. Reserved in heaven for you. Now, 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 listen to this. Incorrupt and undefiled, and that does not fade away. Now, this says reserved in heaven for you. So that means there's, there's something up in heaven. But what does Jesus say? That, that let the... What's on he- what what's in heaven? Let it be done on the earth, right? Verse five: Who are kept reserved in heaven for you? Who are kept by? Who are kept by the power of God? What's keeping you today? What are you looking? What are you looking at to keep you? According to this, it says, who are kept by the power of God through what? Through faith. For salvation. For salvation. I'm kept by the power of God, but it's what's through faith that brings about salvation, that brings about deliverance, that brings about victory, that brings about strength, that brings about wholeness, that brings about completeness, that brings about nothing missing, nothing broken. I'm kept by the power of God. I declare for you that you are kept by the power of God and it's gonna be what? Through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, this last time I'm talking about that I'm waiting for the return of Jesus. I'm waiting for the last days. So, so we're in the last days and we're waiting for Jesus. So there's this faith that we need to have established in our heart. The next verse says, in this you greatly rejoice. I don't hear anybody rejoicing. See, it's in this being kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. It reserved for me in the last day for this time that I'm living in. In this, in this, in this, hallelujah, I rejoice. I rejoice in the fact that I'm kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. I rejoice. Faith rejoices. In this, you greatly rejoice. Now, get this. Though now for a little while... Now, it didn't say forever. If need be, meaning it's not, all, it's not always, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold. Hallelujah. The genuineness of your faith, the sincerity of your faith, the authenticity of your faith. It's not, just a, it's not just a faith in word only. It's, it's something that's down on the inside of you that can't be taken out of you. The trial is not, is what, the trial that you're going through, as, as James says this, that when I am going through trials, that is not what is strengthening my faith. It's my faith that causes me to overcome the trial. So when I'm going through these various trials, what happens is it's the genuineness of my faith that's going to cause me to be victorious. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold. You you don't realize how precious your faith is. Come on, come on, faith is precious. Why am I word, a word of faith preacher? Because faith is precious. Faith pleases God. That's it. Faith. Thank you, Lord. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor. So what does genuine faith look like that it might be found? Even when I'm being tested by fire, what does faith look like? It tells us right there. Praise, honor, praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then it says this, whom having not seen, 
you love. None of us in the natural, so to speak, has seen Jesus, right? But I love him. Amen. Do you love Jesus today? Yes. Let me say, do you love Jesus today? Yes. It says, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice. I don't see Jesus. I can't see Jesus right now, but what? I rejoice. Right now in the natural, I can't see Jesus, but I rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I can't, I, I, might, I might see all these different trials that I'm going through. I might see the doctor's report. I might see what, what the symptoms in my body, but I, I want you to see that, that I can't see Jesus right now, but, but yet believing, I rejoice. Yes. Yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. Receiving the end of my faith. What do you do while you're waiting for your miracle? You continue to rejoice with inexpressible joy. What do you do when you're going through a trial? I let the genuineness of my faith through my honor, my praise, and my glory to God. Hallelujah. And I will see the end of my faith. I will lay hold of what I'm believing. I will walk in the promise. I walk in the dream. I walk in the strength. I walk in the assignment. I walk in my purpose. Hallelujah. I refuse to give up Come on. in any attack that I might be facing. Come on. Come on. Right. I will true. see the end of my faith. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Go to John 12, John 1. John 1. Hallelujah. Our weakness be turned to strength. We'll see the end of our faith. Look at John 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, talking of Jesus, to them he gave the right. One translation says the power. He gave the right. To many as believed in him, to them he gave the right, the power, the privilege to become children of God. All right. Hallelujah. Have you received him? Yes, sir. Yes. Just, just nudge, your, nudge your neighbor. Hallelujah. And, and say, I'm a child of God. Many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. You see, as children, as children, we have rights and we have privileges of the kingdom. Come on. I have rights and I have privileges as a child of God, I have rights and privileges. And then it says this, to those who believe in his name. Do you believe in his name? Yes. Then it says this, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Meaning, meaning this happened not because I could will it. This didn't happen because I was born into it by blood. It didn't happen because, because I have done something great. No, it happened because of what God did. It happened because of what Jesus did. It happened because it was the Father's desire to bring Jesus for me to receive Jesus and then all of a sudden obtain and walk in everything that he purchased for me. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You're a child of God. You're a son of God, and you've been given rights and privileges. And it's not based on anything that you could have ever have done. It was based on he desired yes, yes. Amen. each one of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go to Romans 8. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Going from weakness to strength. Hallelujah. Seeing the end of our faith. Whew. Romans 8. Thank you, Father. 
verse 16. It says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Are you a child of God? Amen. And if children, then heirs. Ooh, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer him, with him, that we may also be glorified him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want you to know it can't be compared to the glory that will be revealed in you. Yes. Why? Because you're a child of God. Yes. It goes on in verse 21 in the latter part of that and says that this glorious liberty of the children of God. This glorious liberty of the children of God. You, you and I have a glorious liberty today. We have a, we have a great freedom today. We have, a, we have a great strength today. We, we have great promises today. Yes. As children of God, I'm an heir, and I'm a joint heir with yes. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. That means when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, he gave me access into this inheritance. And I'm telling you, there's everything I have need of in this inheritance that, that, that is incorruptible, this inheritance that is no deficiency in it. Hallelujah. Sake of time, let's look at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So what should I say to all these? What should I say to the attacks? What should I say to the, to, to the reports? Of, what should I say about all these things? Well, if God is for me, who can be against me? He, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he gave his only son for our salvation, what is, what is our material life? What is healing in our body? What is all the other things that you and I might have need of? And he's given to us all those things richly to enjoy. Why? Because I have inheritance. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of the kingdom. And according to Luke 12, Verse 42, it's my father's good pleasure. It's my father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It's my father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. Hallelujah. There's nothing that he can't do in your life. There's nothing that's not been made available for you in your life. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Verse, uh, I believe it's verse nine. It says, "In you all the nations shall be blessed." So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. All right. Wow. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. And it says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is anyone who does not continue in all these things, which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for what the just shall live by faith. How do we live here at Heritage? By faith. The just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not a faith but the man who does them shall live by them. Now get this, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Let's go to verse 26. 
for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Those two thoughts. Christ has, already has. I'm not waiting for Christ to do something. Christ already has redeemed me. You've been bought off the auction block. Christ has redeemed us. That the blessing of Abraham might come on each one of us. I'm going somewhere, just. But you are, verse 20, for you are the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the what? Promise. Hallelujah. See, I'm telling you, we, ha- we are heirs, we're sons, we're children. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, that means we're heirs to the promises of God. We're heirs to the promises of Abraham. Amen. And you know what? The promises of Abraham affected him materially, financially, in his physical body, in his finances, in every aspect of his life. The promises of God were made available for him. So if the promises of God affected every arena of Abraham's life, so as me being a child of God, I have to understand, and I've been redeemed from the curse, that means that everything that was made available to Abraham has also been made available to me based on covenant promises and the fact that I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. Go to Colossians. Thank you, Father. (laughs) Colossians 1. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11. It says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father. A couple weeks ago, we talked about thanksgiving. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. He's made us fit. He's made us fit. He's qualified us. Hallelujah. I want you to know you qualify. You qualify for the promises of God. Yes. You were like, well, I don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel worthy. It doesn't matter what you feel. You need to understand that you're, you've been qualified. Yes, it's not about earning healing. It's about earning prosperity. It's, it's not about, it's not about doing, doing things in yourself, but it's about laying hold of what is rightly, rightfully yours as a child of God. You've been, you've been made fit. You've been made a partaker. You have been, you are qualified. He qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. I want you to, I, I, I don't want you to doubt another day in your life that you don't deserve it. Because in the natural, none of us could have measured up to anything that was made available. None of us could have measured up with, our good, with how good we could be. Yeah. It's like in Acts chapter 4 when they healed the, 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 the man there at the gate and, and they look at them and they say, you, you look on us, us by somehow by our own holiness as this caused this man to walk. Yeah. Uh-uh. No, it's they had a revelation of the fact that Jesus and through his blood qualified them. Yeah. That's it. That's it. See, sometimes there's some things that, you know, there's a, if you work at different jobs, you have different access to different places, right? 
If you work at Lockheed or you work at different government positions, you, you know, you can have classified. You can have these other different accesses to different things. But, but and, and so sometimes as believers, we kind of think on that level. It's like, well, when I've been saved so long or when, when I get over this or when this happens or when that happens. And, you know, one day when I, when, when, you know, one day in the future, this, this can happen in my life or one day then or one day in the future. And we put things off always in the future, but realize is you already have access. Yeah. You already have access to the very throne room of God. You've been made fit. You are qualified. You've been qualified to be a partaker. Hallelujah. You've been qualified. He's qualified us to be a partaker of what? The inheritance of the saints in the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance in the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Mm. Wow. Let that's the power of darkness. He's delivered us from the power of darkness. Sickness comes from darkness. Disease comes from darkness. Confusion, depression, oppression comes from darkness. Delivered from the power of darkness. And it, New King James says conveyed us. The better word is transferred us. Transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. In whom we have redemption. See, see he took me out of one kingdom and he put me into another kingdom. He took me out of the power of darkness and he transferred me into the kingdom of the son of his love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In whom we have redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Go to Genesis 40, I think it's 48. That was all a foundation, so. <laughs> we got, you got time for two more sets of scriptures? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, sometimes we just gloss over scriptures too lightly and we don't let it really cap. I've been delivered out of the power of darkness. It's like, get off of me, darkness. Get, you, there's nothing you have that I belong, nothing that you have belongs to me because he transferred me into the kingdom of the, his son. Yes. Now, there's something in, in uh, teaching, hemolytics, homolytics, whatever you want to call it, Bible study. There's a phrase, they call it the law of Genesis. Another way you can look at it, you can look at it as the law of first mention. So when you see something in the beginning, that's actually how it, it actually is throughout the entirety of Scripture. And so, so say this after me. I am redeemed. redeemed. Say, I have redemption redemption. because of what Jesus did for me. Because of of his blood, blood, I am redeemed. redeemed. And because I'm redeemed, redeemed, I'm a child of God. I'm I'm an heir. heir. And everything everything that the kingdom has has been made available available to to me. Amen. Now, I want you, just with that in mind, I want us to look at this word, the first place that we see in Scripture, the word redemption. And it's found in, I think I told Genesis 48. Thank you, Father. Verse 15, it says, And he blessed Joseph and said, 
Thank you, Lord. God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked. It's interesting how he's prophesying over and he says, God, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked. See, this is all about relationship. You know what faith is? Faith is all about relationship. Faith is all about being connected to him and connecting with his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not not to produce memorization. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God because it causes me to get to know him. It caused me to get to know his promises. It gets me to know his nature. It gets me to know what, what I have a right to, what's been given. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's so important for us to be in the word, but it's not to memorize scripture, but it's to get to know him. So it's interesting how he said he walked, how they walked with before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day. Wow. So when they walked with him, his, 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 his grandfather, his father, now he is saying, as I walked with God, God has never let me down. God has always come through for me. He's fed me all my life long to this day. Yes. Wow. Then verse 16 says, and the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. So when he walked with God, not only did God, he say, he fed me all my life to this day, but he also says, and the angel. And the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Now, this angel that we're referring to is not an angel that we see flying around the throne room of God in Isaiah Isaiah chapter six. Without going too deep with this, this word angel here, if you look it up in the Hebrew, there's gonna be a word associated with this, and I probably won't say it right, but it's called theophany. And and what that means is, is when they were looking at this, it was like that was a description of using this word angel. It was representing something that was not in this world and it represented something that was above all, anything. So when he was saying the angel here, he's referring to God. Go look it up, go research it. So when the angel, he's saying, God who redeemed me and delivered me out of all trouble. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Some, some scholars believe this was actually Jesus. Just like the, in, in Genesis 22, when the, the angel came down and spoke to, spoke to Abraham before he offered Isaac, it was actually Jesus that, would, that came down and says, and an angel spoke to him and said, don't do that, I've provided a sacrifice. And in the same way, this one that walked this one that walked with Abraham, this one that walked with Isaac, now the one that's walking with with Jacob here, he says, this one who redeemed me. The one who redeemed me from all evil. So if we look at this as a law of first mention and we look at this word redemption, then we need to understand the very foundation of this word redemption is understanding the fact that that whatever I'm facing that doesn't come from the kingdom of God is evil. And understanding that we have Jesus that went to the cross and his redemption was to deliver me and set me free and move move, move on behalf of my life in every area of my life. He delivered me from all evil. And this is the one that's speaking that was, was lied about. The one that was, was, his brothers were a traitor. This is the one that's referring to the one that, that he was sent in prison because Potiphar's wife lied about him. He's, and he sat there and, the, and the, the, the baker and the butcher didn't tell about the dream and, and he stays there even longer. But yet even in the midst of all the struggles he went through, he said, the angel, he is my redeemer and he's delivered me from all trouble. He's delivered me all my life. He's delivered me from all evil. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. 
If this was so for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we are heirs according to the same promise, then the redemption that delivered them from all evil, that same redemption delivers me from all evil. And it doesn't matter if it's poverty. It doesn't matter if it's sickness. It doesn't matter if it's lack. It doesn't matter if it's confusion, depression. You can put whatever label you want to put on it. You can put whatever label you want to put on it. Bottom line, it's evil. Never equate my God with sickness in the earth. Never equate my God with poverty in the earth. Uh -uh. He's redeemed me from all evil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All evil. All evil. Go to Psalms 107. We'll close with this. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Danny, y'all can come up, or whoever you want to come up with you. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. I had notes, and, Fre- and uh, Freddie said, are these your notes? So I just, put, I just said, just put them in the bag. I over- <laughs> you know, when you wake up and the Lord says, minister this, you just obey, right? Psalms 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. (laughs) Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now we, we can look at this scripture in two different ways. One, we can look at it as let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so what we do, we say so. And we say what? What do we say? We say we're redeemed. We say we're redeemed. But if we can also look at it this way, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You could also say, the say so could be this. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. So if I've been redeemed, and it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, but what did they say? Give thanks to the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. So the redeemed, yeah, we can declare we're redeemed, but also the redeemed can say the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. See, see, faith, faith is in, in two places. It's in our heart and faith is in our mouth. Hallelujah. See, see, now some of you got a bigger, better picture of what redemption is all about. It's, it's, it's more than just the salvation that took place with, with our, etern- our, our position in eternity one day. Yes. yes, I've been redeemed from a devil's hell, and I've been given eternity with my heavenly Father. But I want you to know that redemption, he didn't die for 33% of you. First right. Thessalonians 5, 23 says, I pray you're whole whole, complete, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the ultimate purpose of what God desires is that we would be whole, complete, spirit, soul, and body. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. 
Hallelujah. When, 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 when someone comes against you and, and tries to attack you or someone steals something from you, it, it, you don't have to get all over them. To, no, no, because you got to understand the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You just stand up. Hey, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. You have the report from the doctor and, and all, the, all the worry, the fear, the emotions are circling you and surrounding you and, and all the wages are coming against you and the waves are hitting you. That fear is hitting you. You have to stand up and you have to battle it by saying something. Yes, sir. And you say, no, sir, I'm redeemed. Yes, sir. No, sir, I'm redeemed. Yes, sir. Oh, no, darkness. Darkness, I've been delivered from you and I've been transformed, it transferred into the kingdom of the Son. And my kingdom doesn't have sickness. My kingdom doesn't have sorrow. My kingdom doesn't have depression. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Mm. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and the west, from the north and from the south. Verse 6 says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Woo! Hallelujah. Verse 13. Then they cried out unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Hallelujah. See, this, this is, this is a, a picture of our redemption. This is a picture of redemption. Mm. Oh, give thanks. <laughs> oh, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Verse 19. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of the distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered from them from their destruction. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the, to the children of men. Well, we, you, you're the children of men, the children, the children. Hallelujah, the children. Let them sacrifice as the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Verse 28, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they're glad because they're quiet. So he guides them to their desire, desired haven. Woo. Mm. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 listen to this. Now, verse 33 says, he turns rivers into a wilderness. I don't, I don't like the sound of that. And the water springs into dry ground. That doesn't sound like God to me. Does that sound like God to you? Now, but listen, it says, and a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Now, wait a minute. Why did it become barren? And why did it become barren? Why did it become a wilderness? And why did it become barren? Is because of the wickedness, because of the people in it. But get this. Because, man, we're, of, we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Because the next verse says, he turns a wilderness into a pool of water. So meaning there could, be, there could be wicked people in our world that's causing the land to not produce. 
causing the water to the 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 the, the, pool, the water springs to dry up but it says he turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs there he makes the hungry to dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place and so fields and plant vineyards that may yield a fruitful harvest he also blesses them and they multiply greatly and he does not let their cattle decrease Meaning, meaning, you know, there, there could be people in the world that might be causing a drought, but according to the kingdom of God, I don't live out of their kingdom because with me, even in the midst of that, I'm blessed. My cattle don't increase. My, I'll continue to multiply and increasing and abounding. Why? Because the redeemed of the Lord say so. Stand to your feet.